Good morning, it's 17th of November. Uh, the shop, it's a long awaited shop walk around video. Sorry, it's been so long, been a bit busy, so we haven't had time to do one. Uh, so, we have here the Roark um, Templar, I think they're Mark 1s, but a very unusual sort of bird's eye type, maple leaf type um, veneer I've never seen before. We need a bit of, um, a bit of waxing because it's a bit of sun bleaching. Uh, some Kef reference model ones here, which are lovely. These are rosewood and completely boxed and minty and fresh. Uh, this project turntable is a bit cool because it's a uh, it's called a debut four, but as you probably know, that doesn't exist uh, on the box. It says debut four, um, but apparently the story is it's turned into the expression two. But before they launched it, they put two out to dealers, I think, in the north, um, and they were boxed up as as um, uh, debut fours. But that that name didn't didn't go to the final run. So there's only two debut fours um, ever made, and there's one there. A pair of 12 tens, um, everybody knows about those, no introduction needed. Um, classic hi fi deck adopted by the uh, DJ market. Um, some, I think these are Cresta 30s. Uh, the, the normal um, uh, Gale 401s that have been here for ages, uh, they have been sold, but uh, the gentleman's not picking them up at the moment. Um, this is a prototype we know about, it's got a Luxman arm on it and a few other things. Yeah. Okay. Here we have some Rogers um, speakers that are quite unusual. Um, I can't quite remember the name of them, um, but they have, a, they're basically a, a sideways transmission line. So there is a vent here. So there's a labyrinth inside. They've got elliptical drivers, probably EMI ones, but uh, late 60s, very, very um, rare speaker. I can only find one other picture on the internet of these. Um, there's a little uh, some, some cartels. Some LTACs and little Kefs. These are um, Castle Conways uh, with their, their sort of quite flashy stands. These are all fully boxed and minty. Um, Castle fans will probably know that normally you'd have um, foam on there, but this, the, the previous owner asked Castle whether he'd make him some frame. They'd make him some frames, so they've made some proper frames that go on these. Um, so they look rather nice. So that's that's the Conway Conway Two A's, I think they are. This is very special. This uh, is a um, EMG uh, Davy corner reflector, and inside this um, rather mad thing. I mean, that's the way you're supposed to listen to it. You're supposed to reflect off the wall like that. So you're looking at this horrible big face here, but um, actually it sounds better this way around. But inside there is a Tannoy 15-inch silver. Uh, so that's a very special drive unit. Uh, this is this is going to be very soon in John Houser's collection, um, and over here. Uh, an absolutely stunning pair of reconditioned uh, or restored um, French polished Tannoy York cabinets uh, and again in here is 12 inch Tannoy silvers so um, very special to have 15s and, and, a 12, and 12 inch silvers in the shop at the same time um, and yeah they are wonderful um, right round, round to the other speakers tucked away behind the big EMG is some very early Spendor SA1s, it might be a bit dark, but let's have a look. So this, uh, I think they're 400 serial numbers, so they're quite early. Um, the sort of unfinished look of the early Spendors, which is sort of quite nice, really. Um, yeah, love, lovely speakers, these sound really, really good. A um, bit bigger than the LS35A, but the same sort of thing. That's a big Goodman's there, I think they're TX series, if I'm, if I'm right. Uh, some Keysonic KRFs, a couple of little amplifiers. Uh, these are um, KLH, sorry, <laughs> I nearly said KLF it. These are KLH um, 317s. I know this is one of David Price's favourite uh, favorite vintage speakers. These are beautiful. These have been restored by a guy um, called Richard Verney. Um, and what he's done is he's recapped the, uh, the capacitors inside with some music first caps. Um, and also I've refoned these as well. And they're 10 inch fast paper cones, they, they sound really, really good. So you've done a little bit of sort of um, um, absorption near the tweeter and they sound absolutely fantastic. Now these are boxed as well and soon will be available on the market. Um, over here, this came in on Saturday and I haven't even tested it yet, but we've got a, a Thorin's TD124 with a 12 inch arm board um, and the, the very hard to find Dyna Vector for, uh, DB505 tone arm which is a crazy thing, looks like it's been made by NASA or something. Um, this is a bonkers piece of kit. Um, 
magnetic magnetic stay there. Uh, this is the blue hammerite one, which is unusual. Um, it's got a dyno vector 23 carat on it as well, um, which is a rather nice piece actually. And then down underneath it, we have a full set of AR um, components, sort of slopey back um, AR components that for, I think they were from the late 80s, early 90s. Very nice kit actually. Um, Eminent Technology LFT 16s, the small versions of the 8s. Uh, let's go over to the top. <clears throat> the top shelving, some some cool little Mar uh, modern short carnivals. Now I really like these. These are brilliant little speakers. Um, I know they're Sarah's favourites as well. Um, they, they're very very narrow. They only go back a few inches, uh, and they always sound fantastic. Um, next to them we've got these are mine actually. These are the uh, the Mallard 520 valve amps. This one's easier to take off. Um, they started off um, as linear Concorde stage amps. And Mike Pointer, um, who used to work for us, he restored these back to the 520 circuit, so all the tone controls are taken off. Um, everything, uh, all the caps and resistors are done underneath, new valves, and these are wonderful. I run these at home. I brought these in because we had an evening the other day. It was a was a very big event, so I thought I'd bring these in and play with them. But these are very good. Um, here we have the EMG valve amp, a mono one, a KT66. Um, extremely rare. Um, this is going to be a part of John Houser's collection soon. Uh, this comes with the tuner and with the and with the preamplifier with the distinctive EMG buttons. Uh, next to it, we've got an Aurex system, which is lovely. Um, this is Toshiba's high-end brand. Probably, I think it was from the late seventies, early eighties. Um, and then next to that, a classic grey, late grey button um, quad for, uh, forty-four with its three hundred six power amp. Uh, and we've got a Tiac X seven reel-to-reel next to that. Um, on the top shelf, a Grundig valve amp from one of their um, corner radiograms. Uh, some some Goodman's, I think they're Axiom 10, uh, and a long little pair of ARs, they're fantastic. And then a, a Triaxium Goodman's 12. Next to that, AE101s, sorry, 100s, and then some Goodman's um, LS35As. One of the rarer types of, uh, of LS35As, the, the Goodman's ones, you don't see them very often. Um, they sound really, really good actually. Um, and some little modern shorts there. Now down to the racks, you have a Tanberg. Um, I always forget the name of this one. Hang on, it's a 10XD. Um, this is quite nice. Uh, we've, we're just about to get that restored. It's not recording on one side at the moment. Down here we've got a big nice TX8 deck, which is a, a classic piece of kit. And that's lovely. Um, so it's a 6030. If I'm right, yes, yeah, a 6030. Yes. Um, a few little Cambridge Audio DAX there. Nice bit of silver JVC. Various other bits on the rack there. This is sort of our, our starter stuff. Um, this is nice. It's Aurex amplifier here, uh, which is again the, the wait. Well, this one's bad as a Toshiba, but it's at this amplifier. This model is also seen as Aurex as well, depending on which country it was released in. There's a bit of audio lab down the bottom. Right along the top shelf, we have a very special Garrard 301 grease bearing hammer tone, which is a uh, I think it's number 2000 and something, I've, I've got it on the thing here, 2358. As you can see, that's absolutely beautiful. There's not many like this. I mean, this is a this is an absolutely superb example. I'll show you underneath. So that's a very, very special example. Um, it comes with it, all its spindle lubricant, all of its test cards, manual and everything. I mean, that's a, amazing. And then next to it, we have another Grey Garrard, this is even earlier, I think this is 1000 and something, uh, complete with his SME3009 and V15. Uh, this was uh, this was brought into us by a customer who wanted it restored, so we've put it into a slate plinth that we had knocking around upstairs, um, which was originally for a 401, but we've actually um, changed the top plate so it fits a 301. Uh, that's been resprayed and all completely done by Tony Whittle, our turntable man, uh, to a fantastic standard. I mean, this is, this is BMW sparkly graphite um, top plate which it looks looks fantastic so this is all working away uh, and this has been ready to picked up been picked up by a customer it came in looking like it had been buried in the garden for a few weeks and now it looks really nice um yeah so here we are in the retro room uh this is a lovely ar legend i've I'm a real, got a real soft spot for these they're fantastic i love them um, this has got a limb basic arm on it and I think we're running uh, 
classic M75 car for John that. Um, into that, or well, from that, we're going into a pure sound P10, which is our favourite valve for stage. We look really like that. Into the um, the A30, which is our sort of mainstay valve amp that we push. It's a, it's a great, great bit of kit. Um, Audio Lab CD player, squeeze box, which you, anyone who knows the shop knows I'm a big fan of. Got one of them in each room. Uh, and then into a restored pair of Haybrook HP1s, which are very early ones, pre pre the Vernon Morris thing. The Vernon Morris used to make all the um, all the plastic plates, ending plastic on a, on a vintage British speaker. Lots of companies used him um, for the badges and the browning posts. This is pre pre plastic binding post. So this is a wooden binding post. So if you see a pair of HP ones with that wooden binding post, you know they're very early, probably pre one uh, pre one thousand serial number. That's those. Um, a big pair of uh, Morton Shorts here. These are called Signifers. Um, one of Morton Shorts' biggest speakers they ever made. Um, and uh, 478 pounds in, in the late 70s, which was a lot of money. Uh, this pair need um, a bit of work on the, well, they need, they need refoaming. Um, but the interesting feature in the Signifer is you could pop the crossover out of the front and the box is still sealed, but you can work on the crossover uh, and then just pop it back on and it's got sort of grill studs and um, just off it goes. That's a very nice uh, speaker to be able to work on and recap. Here's our prototype turntable which is uh, being uh, in its final stages of sort of pre-production and that will be hopefully available reasonably soon. Right, we're in the modern room now. Um, we've got the eminent technology lft 8 b you know all about those. Uh, this, uh, uh, the American panel hybrids that we absolutely love. And then uh, on the rack we have um, one of our passives, which we are uh, doing quite well with. Uh, and that being fed into that is um, uh, another squeeze box. And um, as I said earlier, big fan of those. Now we've got the, uh, the Atsar um, 500 monoblocks made by, um, um, uh, by Acoustic Imagery, uh, which is John Young. And John, John Young, Young used to be, uh, along with Steve Williams, Oak turntable, so British turntable fans will know who, who he is.